Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is table. T-A-B-L-E. Really? You bet your life. More than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! Sorry, he's taking the five-mile trial. Oh, that's me! <laughs> well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples. Roger, we have some young single people for you tonight. They were selected just before we went on the show. Uh, Miss Madonna McGlon and Dr. John D. Chudikoff meet Groucho Marx. Wait a minute, Fenema. What's that name again? Uh, Chudikoff. Kazuna. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, youngsters, for the Soto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, it's something you see every day. Miss uh, Madonna uh, McGlon. Is that right? That's right. And Dr. John uh, D. Chudikoff. What's your hometown, uh, Madonna? Minneapolis, Minnesota. Minneapolis, huh? Isn't that near St. Paul? Yes, it's one of the Twin Cities. Oh. How old are you, uh, Madonna? Uh, Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight? Well, mm-hmm. you don't look at it. Well, thank you. thought you were about 27. Huh? <laughs> John uh, uh, D. Chudikoff, uh, where are you from, uh, Johnny? I was born in uh, southwest Los Angeles, uh, about a stone's throw from USC. How old are you, uh, John? Thirty-one. And how did you meet your wife, John? I'm not married. Don't change the subject. How did you meet your wife? <laughs> what are you doing now, Mr. Chudikoff? Uh, Dr. Chudikoff, you don't mind. Oh, yes. Well, I don't mind. <laughs> it's your patience I'm thinking about. <laughs> well, who are you doing now, Mr. Chudikoff? <laughs> By the way, Doc, I have a little pain in my shoulder after the show. Could you uh, fix it up for me? I'm afraid not, Groucho. I'm a veterinarian. Where is your abattoir, Doc? I operate the Valley Animal Hospital in Van Nuys. You do? You operate on the whole hospital? Or... <laughs> why, why do they call you a doctor, Doc? Well, our training is uh, very similar to that of the MDs, and I have the degree of Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. Well, what's the reason for that? Do you have to practice on humans before they trust you with an animal? <laughs> why is it similar? Well, our training is uh, very similar, and the, the studies in the anatomy of an animal is uh, also very similar to that of the human, except uh, animals do not have a collarbone or an appendix. Do you have an appendix, uh, Madonna? No, I don't. Have you got a collarbone? I have two of them. You have two collarbones? Two collarbones. I'm just checking. A man can't be too careful these days. <laughs> I, I had a girl out the other night, and she didn't have an appendix or a collarbone. <laughs> I wonder if that girl really was a kangaroo. <laughs> Do you have a job, Madonna? Yes, I do. I'm a nurse. I'm a registered nurse. Mm-hmm. Well, where are you registered? In the American Kennel Club? <laughs> where do you do your nursing? No, I work at Queen of Angels Hospital. It happens to be uh, the largest private hospital west of the Mississippi. We have 501 beds there. Do you work in the operating room? Yes, I do. I don't know why they call it the operating room. Last time I was there, I started operating in the nice chloroforming. <laughs> Are you assigned to any particular part of the hospital, you know, in case I get sick? Well, I'm always in the operating room. Oh. Well, what do you have to do to keep on good terms with the doctors? Well, we want to maintain a professional attitude, uh, calling them doctor, standing when they come in the room. You and hop up when they come in the room? Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Did you know that? Uh, do your dogs do that when you walk in the room? <laughs> they all stand on their hind legs when you walk in? <laughs> Well, uh, what are some of the differences between your job and that of a, a regular doctor? Doctor? <laughs> doc? Well... Are you a dry doc or do you drink or... Uh... <laughs> well, they're very similar. Uh, gosh, oh, it's uh, a bit more difficult for us to diagnose our cases because uh, our, our patients can't tell us where it hurts. No. You ought to consider yourself lucky. You know the old line, never ask anyone how they feel, they're liable to tell you. 
How, how do you know how much to charge a patient? For example, suppose a cow comes in. <laughs> what do you, do you find out if she's loaded first? <laughs> and if she is, do you milk her for everything she's got? <laughs> well, our fees are quite a bit more reasonable. Uh, for example, an MD will charge around $150 to deliver a baby, where I'll uh, deliver a dozen puppies for about $10. That's very interesting. If a woman doesn't have $150, she can always have a dozen Irish sets. <laughs> I want to ask you a question, Doc, and I want you to be honest about this. What brand of dog biscuits do you smoke? <laughs> Now, is it safe working with animals? Isn't there a chance you might catch something dreadful like fleas? <laughs> no, there's not much danger. In fact, in many ways, it's, uh, it's safer to work with animals than with humans. Well, how, for example? Would you mind amplifying that a little well, bit? Well, believe it or not, for example, it would be much safer for a baby to be licked by a dog than to be kissed by a human. You mean it's safer to be kissed by a dog than a human? That's right. Doc, I think I understand why you're not married. <laughs> well, you two have a lot in common, and I hope you'll be very happy together. And I'll pronounce you man's best friend. <laughs> you're a nice young couple, and I wish you good luck in the immediate future. Because in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,500 question. First, I want you to pay close attention to some good advice from Mr. Farrell. Friends, I'd like to remind you about getting your car ready for colder weather. Be sure to tell them, George. There's a lot more to it than just getting antifreeze and having the oil changed. That's right. If you expect your car to start on the coldest winter mornings, to shift smoothly, to operate efficiently, then the place to take it right away is to a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's. First, for easier shifting on even the coldest days, your transmission will get the proper lubricants. For quicker winter starting, your battery will be checked. To handle the increased electrical load of winter driving, the DeSoto Plymouth dealer mechanics will step up your generator and check your spark plugs. The brakes of your car are especially vital in bad weather, so they will be carefully serviced for safer winter stopping. The master technicians at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers will tune the engine of your car, too, to make sure it will give you economical operation mile after mile. And, of course, you'll get the proper oil... Your radiator will be cleaned and flushed. You'll get a good antifreeze. All the things your car needs to give you worry-free operation even in the coldest weather. And believe me, you'll be amazed how little you pay for all this expert service to your car. So drive in for that cold weather checkup tomorrow. Wherever you see the famous sign of better service, the friendly sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Now, uh, let's see how high I can build you $20. Out of our list of 20 categories, uh, you selected uh, number one. Summer hits is your category. These songs were all popular during the summer. Now, let's see if you can identify them. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? $19.50. How much? $19.50. huh? Okay, play it, Jerry. <laughs> Good start. You have thirty-nine dollars and fifty cents. All right. Remember, you're going for fifteen hundred dollars tonight. Now, how much of your thirty-nine fifty are you going to try? Oh, thirty-nine. Is that right? Thirty-nine. All right. Let's see if you can identify this one. Play it, Jerry. Walking my baby back home. That is absolutely correct. You now have seventy-eight dollars and fifty cents. How much will you bet? $78. 78 uh, Did you consult with the dog doctor? Yes, I did. What is the name of this song? I'm yours. I'm yours is right. And you'll now have $100. 
$156.50. What did you say was the name of that song? I'm yours. I may hold you to that. <laughs> Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. Now, how much of the $156.50 will you risk? The whole thing. The guns are my spoke. All right, play it, Jerry. <laughs> Watch me, my baby. Watch me is right. <laughs> and you wind up with three hundred and thirteen dollars. Roger, we have a housewife and a man with an interesting background. Mrs. Maydell Goodall and Mr. Joseph R. Shearer. So you can come in now, folks, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and uh, and you'll win a hundred dollars. It's a common way. It's something you see every day. Mrs. Uh, Maydell Gouldall, eh? That's a pretty fancy handle, Maydell. I'll just call you May. Oh, that'd be fine. Oh. <laughs> and you can call me December. <laughs> Where are you from, May? Eh? Oh, I'm from Houston, Texas, but I was reared in San Angelo, Texas. Can't you tell that I'm a Texan from the way I talk? <laughs> I can tell you from Texas, but I didn't know you were reared, that's all. <laughs> Mr. Joseph Shearer, you're a dog doctor, huh? No. No, oh, you're yeah. not? Oh. Well, where are you from, Joe? I'm from Lausanne. I beg your pardon? I'm from Lausanne. <laughs> Lausanne? Isn't that in the Philippines? Oh, no. Uh, you mean, uh, you think, uh, Lausanne? Well, thanks. I'm always glad to know what I'm thinking of. <laughs> where are you from, Joe? From Lausanne. You, got, you persist in saying that, huh? That's, uh, uh, Isn't that what I was thinking of a minute ago? No, you said Luzon in the Philippines. But uh, Luzon is a beautiful town on Lake Geneva in the little country of Switzerland. Oh. In other words, you're, you're a Swiss, huh? That's right. Can you yodel? No. Fine Swiss. Are you? <laughs> you're more uh, towards the cheese type, huh? <laughs> what made you decide to come to the United States? I wanted to learn English. I see. What sort of work do you do? Uh, did you smuggle anything in there? No. Nothing, yeah? I'm selling life insurance. You are, yeah? Well, isn't it a shame I don't speak English? Yeah? <laughs> and, uh, May, uh, what sort of work does your husband do? Well, my husband's in the insurance business, too, Groucho. Well, I'm caught like a rat in a trap. <laughs> hey, are you married, uh, Joe? Yes. No insurance against that, is there? No insurance against that. How did you meet your wife? Through Esperanto. Oh, Esperanto, yes. He's a marriage broker in Acapulco, isn't he? <laughs> I know him very well. Jose Esperanto. <laughs> he also sells uh, trinkets down there. Uh... What's he doing now, Esperanto? I don't know. There's no such man I know of. Esperanto. <laughs> Esperanto is an international language. Oh, I see. Well, uh, uh, tell me about this Esperanto. You say that this is a universal language? Yes. It has taken uh, words, uh, the international words, from all the other international languages, uh, English, French, German, Italian, even Japanese words and Chinese words in it. And no matter where you went, no matter where I went, I always found people who spoke the language. Mm -hmm. Did you ever meet a Mexican named uh, Joe Esperanto down <laughs> Santa Cruz, I think he was. Did you propose to your wife in Esperanto? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. what, did you, what did you say? And did she understand it? I bet you can't. Oh, learn. she was one of my students in, a, in an Esperanto class. So I said to her, uh, uh, Mi petas esto mia etzino. Mm -hmm. Now, how come she didn't call a cop? <laughs> can you speak Esperanto? No, I can't even talk English very well. <laughs> Well, I wasn't going to go into that. I just... <laughs> What's the good of me sitting here and trying to insult you if you're going to do it yourself? <laughs> well, it's been interesting talking to you two, and I wish you both good luck in the quiz. Beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,500 question. Can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. Dr. Chudikoff and the nurse won $313, and the secret word is table. Here we go. Let's see how I can build you $20. You selected basic astronomy. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? 
Nineteen dollars and... Nineteen ninety-five. Nineteen ninety-five? We know who's Baron Grant's tomb, so we have anything to lose, so... <laughs> Okay. The word sola, S-O-L-A-R, refers to what heavenly body? To the sun. That's right. You now have $39.95. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. Now, how much of your uh, $39.99.95 are you going to try? $39.90. $39.90. Okay. $39.90? That's right. $39.90. Okay. What is the name of the planet with nine satellites and an encycling series of rings? Saturn. That's right. Saturn. <laughs> You're really climbing. You have $79.85. Here's your third question. How much of this vast sum are you going to risk this time? You have $79.85. All but five cents. All right. <laughs> $79.80. Is that all right with you, Joe? Well, okay. The largest telescope in the world, 200 inches in diameter, is located on what mountain? Palomar. Palomar is right. <laughs> you now have one hundred fifty-nine dollars and sixty-five cents. How much? We have one hundred fifty-nine dollars and sixty-five cents. Sixty. Ask them how much they're betting. <laughs> how much are you betting? All the nickel. Ask them in Esperanto. <laughs> <laughs> the better. One hundred and fifty-nine dollars and sixty cents. Right. All right. I'm so happy that I'm out of this whole thing. Huh? <laughs> if the sun was totally or partially obscured by the shadow of another heavenly body, the phenomenon would be called what? An eclipse. An eclipse is right. An eclipse. <laughs> and wait a minute. You now have three hundred nineteen dollars. And 25 cents, and that's in English. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, how much is that in Esperanto? Uh, three cents, take now, two take clean. Yeah, yeah I'm the same thing. <laughs> Thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Thank you. And now here's a beautiful girl I'd like to know better, with news about another beauty, the 1953 DeSoto. Hello, this is Wendy Barry. And right now, I want you to get a pencil and mark down this date, November the 13th. That's the day the stunning new 1953 DeSoto goes on display at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Be sure and be at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers on Thursday, November the 13th. Groucho, we invited some prominent uh, Republicans and some Democrats to the program tonight. And uh, just before we went on the air, Mrs. Mildred Younger and Mr. Stanley Long were chosen to be on our show. And here they come, folks. I want you to meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Mildred uh, Younger, huh? you look like you're a very happily married woman. I am. Well, I'm sorry to hear it. Huh? <laughs> and you're the Republican. I certainly am. Now, pardon me while I make a shrewd deduction. <laughs> You, old boy, evidently are the Democrat. Obviously, Mr. Marx. Now, what sort of work do you do, uh, Mr. Long? Well, I'm in public relations and advertising work. I see. In other words, you're a huckster, is that it? Well, I wouldn't exactly say that, no. No. Well, you wouldn't, but other people have. <laughs> Mrs. Hung uh, Younger, you told me that you're married, huh? That's right. You're very attractive, you know. Thank you. I'm not sure I approve of the schlemiel you're a huckster. <laughs> Tell me something about him. For example, what are his qualifications for taking care of a, an extremely uh, interesting-looking woman? Well, he's an attorney. He was a special investigator for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. He was uh, a member of... <laughs> <laughs> he was with both G2 and OSS when he was in the infantry during the Second World War. Then he came back and was city prosecutor in Pasadena for a number of years, was recalled into the Air Force where... He was a lieutenant colonel with the Office of Special Investigations. He's now an attorney again. If your husband is listening, Shlemiel is a Latvian word meaning wonderful, charming fellow. <laughs> All right, now we 
we have the preliminaries out of the way, let's talk politics. <laughs> Mr. Long, uh, Stanley, uh, how long have you been voting Democrat? All my life. Typical politician, I started voting at the age of two. <laughs> Mrs. Younger, or Millie, uh, uh, do you uh, object to me calling you Millie? Not at all. You seem so dignified and so sure of yourself. I was a little hesitant about uh, calling you Millie, but uh, you can call me Millie, too, I mean, if it will <laughs> make you feel any better. Have you been voting Republican all your life? I've been voting Republican since I was 21. I see. And before that, you voted Democrat? <laughs> Got to watch my step around here. I'm going to be absolutely neutral. <laughs> Just call me Adelaide Eisenhower. <laughs> What's your reason for being a Republican, Billy? Well, I believe that the Republican Party offers more to the people. Really? Exactly how much are you offering? Huh? <laughs> You've got us mixed up with the Democrats. <laughs> Well, uh, what do you mean by that? I mean... Well, seriously, I, I believe that the Republican Party offers prosperity with peace. I believe that it offers uh, leadership. I believe that it offers a way out of a continual series of careers and international affairs which this nation can afford, neither economically or militarily. I think it offers all of those things that all of those people in the audience expect it to offer, and I, I fully intend to see to it that our party lives up to their expectations. Well, I hope they do. Now, what made you decide to become a Democrat, uh, Stanley? Well, I think probably, Groucho, from the very first uh, time I became cognizant of policies, social economic policies, uh, I became aware of the fact that the Democratic Party was actually the party of the people, the party that the people looked to when they had something to protest about, uh, the party that uh, was not the privileged party in the sense that they cared not uh, what the people did as long as they got along some way or another. And uh, I think that Mrs. Uh, Younger was quite correct when she said that the uh, you had us mixed up. The Democrats have offered a great deal and have delivered a great deal we as long as I can remember. <laughs> We're fortunate in that they're both good men. Here, at least, we have two candidates. In a certain country I won't mention, you vote for Joe or out. <laughs> it's been stimulating talking to you two, and I want to say that I admire your energy and courage to fight for something you believe in. Right now, you both have a chance to win. Run your 20 bucks into more than our other covers, and you'll get a chance at the $1,500 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. Mrs. Gouldall and the Esperanto man lead with $319.25. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected odd names of familiar objects. Here's your first question. How much will you bet of the $20 that you have? Fifteen, be all right. I think that's sort of extravagant. Well, all right, let's be conservative. How about ten? See, the Republicans always want to save money. <laughs> <laughs> they want to get their money's worth. <laughs> all right, how much are you betting? <clears throat> Talk it over now. Time's a waste and ten dollars. Okay. What do you call the rimless glasses that perch on the bridge of the nose? Pince-nez. Pince-nez? I can't pronounce it. Yeah, I can't. I think it's pince or something. It's actually, but uh, it's generally called pince but that's the... <laughs> on your way, you have $30. Now, how much of your $30 are you going to try this time? 25 I'd say 20 <laughs> you, you, uh, you decide. That's all right. Well, let's make it 25 this time. That's fine. All right. What do you call a strip of cloth uh, cut off to serve as a sample? A, a swatch. Swatch is right, yes. <laughs> you now have $55. This is also a swatch, you know. Huh? <laughs> Here's your third question. How much of the 55 will you bet? It's your choice, Mr. 10. 40 $40. What do you call the jewel headpiece that resembles a crown and is worn by women in formal dress? Tiara. Tiara is right. You now have $95. And here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 95 are you going to try? Your turn. 75 $75? What do you call the little star on a typewriter key used to indicate a footnote? Asterisk. Asterisk, Asterisk is right. <laughs> And you wind up with a grand total of $170, 
And that means that Mrs. Gouldall and the Esperanto man with $319.25. In just one minute, get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Thank you, Carl. Friends, I've just seen a preview of the new 1953 DeSoto, and I want to tell you what a beautiful new car it is. This car has got a... Well, don't worry, folks. There's nothing wrong with your receiver. We just turned off Groucho's microphone so he wouldn't give away the exciting story about the new 1953 DeSoto until the big day. You see, on November 13th, at your DeSoto Plymouth Dealer showroom, the distinguished 1953 DeSoto goes on display for the very first time. Remember the day, Thursday, November 13th. Your first chance to see the beautiful new 1953 DeSoto at your DeSoto Plymouth Dealer showroom. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. And uh, here's Mrs. Gouldall and the Esperanto man all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. Groucho? All right, here we go for $1,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully, and please no help from the audience. Ready? The air you breathe is composed of a number of gases. For $1,500, which of these gases is present in the largest amount? 78%, in fact. All right, kids, what's the answer you two have decided upon? Oxygen. No, I'm sorry, it's nitrogen. Nitrogen. It's 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% argon, whatever it is. All the others amount to less than one-tenth of 1%. So the correct answer is nitrogen, so that means the big question next week will be worth $2,000. Well, they lost the big money. How much did they win the quiz? Uh, $319.25. Well, congratulations, and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Thank you. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $2,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. Don't forget, folks, on Thursday, November 13th, the distinguished 1953 DeSoto will go on display for the very first time at your DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Make a day to see it, and when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Twilight reduces visibility. Reduce your speed accordingly. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Thank <laughs> you.